Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Charlotte Street's monthly artist conversation called Peer. We meet every second Tuesday of the month. Um, Charlotte Street invites three artists, curates them, pairs them together based on uh, what they're doing in their studios, what they're doing out in the community, but it's also we're looking at connecting artists in the community. And we started this project back during the COVID lockdown. And so knowing that we weren't being able to do studio visits and things like that, that we started going directly to the artist. So tonight, um, there's, we've invited three different artists all working in glass and you'll learn definitely more about them. Uh, this is just a short elevator kind of way to find out more about them. So they each have been uh, commissioned to make a five minute video in, with commentary. They only get to show 10 slides. So this is a total challenge for them. And um, we, they then did the commentary. So we'll run each one of those. And then we'll spend about 15 minutes with letting the artists ask each other some questions. If you have anything you would like to mention or say, uh, you can just throw it in the chat. Um, so thank you all on the Facebook world and uh, everyone out here on the Eventbrite. So tonight we have three artists. We said we've got Kate Clements. We also have Tyler Kimball and Jessalyn uh, Mayolo. So we're going to kick it off first with Kate Clements. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Clements. And for the past decade, I've been working in glass, creating installations that have been displayed nationally and internationally. In my work, I attempt to make glass unrecognizable from its own materiality. It can be read as honey, ice, mold, velvet, even clotted blood. It can appear to be in action, growing or dying, melting or freezing. I like to invite the viewer in with the work's beauty. There is, however, a darkness under the surface, a snake in the grass, bloodstains in the pattern, a world on fire, the work begins in small pieces. Each piece is placed in relation or reaction to the piece next to it. My aim is to create harmony, allowing for the work to become bigger than the sum of its parts. Because glass is transformative, it provides for an aha moment when the viewer discovers what the piece is made of. Prior to its reveal, most people are comfortable around the work. It feels approachable through its preciousness but once they know, there becomes a sense of nervous tension between the viewer and the piece as it dominates the space, like stain, which is nearly eight feet across and seven feet high. I'm using a chintz-like pattern and the material to bring the viewer in, only to reveal that something's not quite right. The fragility of the glass becomes metaphorical for the fragility of the body. There is a delicate intricacy to that of lace which has been spoiled. What reads as pattern from far away falls apart and becomes more like a festering wounds that ooze and drip. This piece is an eight by eight foot curtain that's hung uh, from the ceiling and holds its own weight. The reason there are gaps and holes in it was by accident. Partway through installing it, a couple pieces actually exploded under the tension and weight. And with those gaps in the piece, it actually became more dynamic because when it was installed later, it was hung closer to the wall and the shadows cast on the wall filled those gaps and the piece completed itself. Um, so it was through that experience, shadows actually started to become a real prominent part of my work. Uh, I'll play with lighting and piece a certain way to have the shadows extend the work size. U utilizing translucent glass can create shadows that have a particular hues to them, creating a type of aura to the piece. Uh, this can cause a visual vibration that allows the work to come to life. I create my work using frit, a type of crushed glass. Working directly on a kiln shelf, I sift, scatter, and push the sugary-like substance with simple tools a plastic spoon, rubber tip clay tools to construct images. The process is akin to trying and at times painterly with the orchestration of material, color, and texture. I meticulously lay out a pattern, but there's a wonderful loss of control as the material is transformed in the kiln through time and temperature. It moves in, and melts in ways that are not always predictable. 
The symbiotic relationship of control and deviation has developed my visual language. This stops the work from becoming too sweet. As the glass pulls and distorts, it flirts with becoming slightly eerie. I can conform it, but only to a point. Recently, I've been looking to the history of ornament in domestic spaces. I'm drawn particularly to the Victorian era with the arts and crafts mo movement and their critique on how nature should be emulated in the home. They sought to create and construct an ideal natural world impervious to decay. In my work, I explore the imitation of nature as a construction of a false natural paradise. These decorative acts function as an aesthetic veil that draws attention only to reveal deficiencies. The work trembles with fragility, reflecting the precariousness of the reality that's presented to the viewer. Transparent and ephemeral, it vacillates between memorial and portal, becoming a nervous entanglement of crystalline flowers frozen in time. That work is so incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm going to pull up the next presentation, Tyler. Um, and Tyler will give some live commentary. And um, so just give me one second as I set that up. Hi, um, my name is Tyler Kimball. I'm a glass artist. And here I am looking cool, doing my thing, blowing glass. Um, I am a glass blower primarily, but uh, I work in all different uh, types of glass. Uh, earlier today, I was laminating glass. Uh, last night, I was painting on glass. Um, I do kiln forming, uh, stained glass. I do all sorts of forms of glass, but glass blowing is really where my art kind of took off. Um, in Seattle, I was working as a stained glass artist and then jumped into a uh, manufacturing studio called Glass Eye Studio where I was a production glass blower. Um, production glass blowing is still runs deep in my veins. This is one of my products today, these, bed, uh, these uh, bud bases. And um, I have a lot of products uh, and I love that kind of uh, almost Zen feeling of making products over and over again, just letting the body do the motions. Uh, through my years at, at Glass Eye and other factories there in Seattle, um, I met a lot of other glass artists and not only glass blowers, but glass painters um, and other types of, of artists and did a lot of collaborative work. This was a piece that I did with a painter and actually taught her how to do uh, painting with enamels so that we could uh, work together. And then we did a residency together um, where she painted on vessels that I made that I had to make the vessels more like a, um, a canvas than an actual vessel. But through all of my kind of workings outside of the factories in Seattle, I started uh, producing games uh, and game pieces uh, with my glass and the shuttlecock is really what took hold, um, which was kind of uh, true to my nature of missing Kansas City while I was in Seattle. And the shuttlecock really has a beautiful uh, splay of design to work with on that skirt there. So I was able to do a lot with cane work, which I really enjoyed. Uh, working with canes, so the shuttlecock was a great display for different kinds of cane. But what I've been doing ever since I learned how to blow glass is rondelles, um, and then a lot of circles, I'm doing air quotes right now, I'm uh, known as the rondelle king uh, because I make so many rondelles. This is my main product, um, and it has been for a long time. Uh, the rondelle is actually uh, what I was making today. Um, it's what built my studio here in Kansas City, a big order uh, came in that allowed me to build Monarch Glass Studio. Monarch Glass Studio has seen a lot of projects through it, not just rondelles, um, such as this one that we did for Disney. It's in Tokyo. It's a 277 pound piece of crystal that my team and I polished and, uh, and it's in an installation um, over there in Tokyo. And we've done so many great uh, pieces of work and I've gotten to work with so many great uh, artists uh, that have been a part of my team as, uh, at Monarch Glass Studio. It's really the pride of my career. Um, but I do also kind of dabble with just making something for fun every once in a while. Uh, this is an homage to Hans Lipperhe, which Hans Lipperhe was the uh, cold worker who made the very first lens um, and it revolutionized civilization. Uh, the clarity of glass and then being able to hand this off to Galileo uh, was a, a, made us able to look out into the depths of the 
the universe and also was able to let us look in inward. Um, and of course, that was a rondelle at the end of that telescope. Uh, it also allows us to refract light and do lots of things with light. Um, I love the transmission of light. My father is actually a lighting artist. Um, and uh, so I guess I took on, on that when I started working with glass. Uh, I work with, with light, whether it's uh, artificial light and lighting uh, or in stained glass, which is how I got into glass. And I continue to do stained glass. Um, and this, this work here uh, was uh, about two years ago installed at Truman Medical Center. And it's 470 uh, square feet of rondelles that are intricately made with cane uh, and, and calmo process. And uh, it's stained glass and it's absolutely gorgeous when the light comes through it. Uh, and that's really where uh, my passion comes in is making blown work to make installations of stained glass uh, pieces, which actually my next installation is gonna be at the Lawrence Transit Facility. And uh, one of the locations in that, there's three different locations at that facility. Uh, it also has stained glass incorporated. So I'm excited to be able to work on that. I'm always looking towards that next thing. Uh, the last thing was awesome, but the next thing is gonna be even more amazing. And so I'm really excited about the Lawrence Transit Facility. Thanks everybody, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You are the Randall King, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you right. so much. And now we have Jocelyn Melo. Hi, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Maloa. I'm originally from Indonesia, but I went to school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, where I first encountered glassworking. My main body of work uses glass in video and performance to convey concepts that are inspired by my identity as a Chinese Indonesian living in the United States. But I also have another separate body of work, which I will share later on, that is more sculptural. So I started making video work that used glass as a filter. I was interested in how it distorts our vision and changes our perception of reality, and how that distortion can affect the viewer's thoughts and feelings. For example, in this piece, I made a glass lens that had multiple facets and took videos of subtle gestures that the body makes when a person is anxious. Then as I kept working with the material, I became very intrigued by the parallels of glass and human nature. For example, glass is fragile yet resilient. It is ephemeral yet perpetual. It is moldable yet rigid. So, I started doing more performative work based on these ideas. In a lot of my work, I interact with glass objects to portray a narrative that is based on my experience as an immigrant. For example, here I interacted with a glass mask that I made, and I asked another performer to break the glass mask with her bare hands. Uh, these are screenshots from a video where I explored a narrative in Indonesia's history when Chinese Indonesians were pressured to change their names um, in order for them to fit into the society. And if you look closely, you can see letters of a Chinese name written as air bubbles in the glass. And throughout the video, I break and grind down the glass object into dust and then use that glass dust to write the new name to show this story of transformation. And this is another video I did when I made uh, these glass leaves and throughout the video, I chewed on them and spit the chewed glass into a sheet of banana leaf. Uh, the idea behind this piece came from my contemplation about cultural assimilation and acculturation, where there is a constant questioning of which culture and values I should take in as an immigrant here. Um, and here are some more images of a video that I created during the pandemic. Um, I wrote a letter using the batik process, which is a traditional hand dyeing process from my home country. And part of the process is to use melted wax to write or draw the pattern before dyeing the cloth. Usually the tool is made of metal and wood, but here I made the writing tool out of glass instead. So now I want to shift a bit to a different body of work that is a lot more recent. 
And these are glass sculptures that are all created in the hot shop by manipulating hot glass. They are very different from my video and performative work because they're a lot more whimsical and playful. I started hot sculpting about a year ago when I observed Julia and Robin Rogers work. They're both amazing hot sculptors. It really inspired me to approach glass in a more playful, almost childish way. So I ended up creating these rabbit inspired sculptures. So the concept behind this body of work comes from childhood fantasies and memories. Like this particular piece, for example, was inspired by this fairy tale scene of a hero riding a dragon, um, but with my own twist to it. And this one you know, is inspired by a fantasy character, which is the Tooth Fairy. I really enjoy all the different processes that I can use to work with glass. I am definitely still you know, continuously learning and experimenting with this material. Um, but at the end of the day, I hope that my work can spark conversations with the viewers, whether it's about something more lighthearted or concerning political issues that I care about. Thank you so much. Um, amazing. So as you can see, glass has a wide, wide variety of things to make. And we've got some masters here. So I'm fortunate to have that. Um, there's definitely a lot of support, it feels like, for the glass community in the last few years uh, with some new workshops opening, um, Monarch being one that Tyler has, and the Annex over at Belger and the Independence as well. Um, super exciting, and I love seeing just the breadth of where people are investigating. Kate, one thing that I'll kick it off with a question. Um, I'm fascinated by about that, you know, the, um, the chances of failure, but uh, and then how that was to fix, you know, that with the, and I was just kind of curious with all of you how much, I mean, obviously glass and fire, you never know what exactly you're going to come with. There's a science to it, but I'd just be curious if that's how common that is with the other artists too, or just, you know, and, and how you decided to go make that a positive versus throw it in the trash, go to the next, or maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that just because glass is so, that risk is always there. Like the chance of a piece breaking is even in like the hot shop, it could fall off the blowpipe or, you know. Um, and so at least for me, I've had to like, in a way, just learn to let things go. And I feel like that's kind of like a, a nice healthy part because I can be so perfectionistic in other aspects of my work, but that, you know, that the risk that it could all just break at some point just makes it so, I just like, you can just have to let it go, you know? Um, so I, but I think that's sort of a, it's throughout a lot of glasswork because that if it's not in the making process, it's in the install process or, or the shipping process or, you know, the risk is always there. Yeah, yeah, that's very, yeah, definitely. And um, support that, support the risk. Um, and then uh, Tyler, um, I'm going to guess you're a perfectionist just by looking at your work. Um, but I'd be curious, like what you think about, uh, you know, how other artists incorporating this into other mediums like the lens being used like how you're using it for a telescope but her using it for the video and just I think that's really exciting to see how that's working I'm just kind of curious if you're seeing a lot of that over at your studios or just if you want to talk more about that um different mediums working with glass more often well, oh yeah 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 like the cross pollination of like how incorporating making video making the lenses to do those and uh, I just, yeah. I, I always think of it as such a more on like what you're, you know, install versions of that. So it's just, it's, it's fascinating to see it like that way too. Yeah. I mean, I always think that um, other artists can't make glass. So uh, they just, it takes too long to figure out glass. Uh, so you either are a glass artist or you're an artist with a whole bunch of other stuff. So they've got to call upon us glass artists to do the glass part. So we're asked to collaborate with other artists a lot. Um, which it's great. It's exciting to be able to work with another artist, see their vision and work within it. Um, I, I, for one, love it. It's one of my favorite things is when somebody comes up to me who's like, I don't know if this can be done, but 
you think it can be done? I'm like, all right, let's do it. So, yeah. Awesome. Did you have any questions uh, noticing from the other two slides? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, Kate, how do you, how do, so th that's not all one piece, right? So how do you no. hang this together? What's your... <laughs> Um, I use um, monofilament fishing line, um, but it's basically um, you work your way across the top and work your way down. And um, there's a lot of using of like holding one piece in place and kind of threading it through and like tying it with your teeth. <laughs> and, like It's very hands-on. Um, the last time I did an installation like that, um, my husband was helping me and he was, uh, you know, a piece slipped, you know, it didn't, it didn't um, break, but the whole, it all shifted like eight feet of it. And he was like, why do you make your work like this? This is so unbelievably stressful. And then we had it, we, finished the piece and you know it was up and it was it was stain it was the kind of pale pink red piece and it was like yeah that one was like the the showstopper <laughs> it's like that's why you do it because it's it kind of defies gravity um but monofilament um at i feel like a lot of my process is actually pretty simple you know it's like using spoons and clay tools and thread simple that's and, I mean <laughs> yeah yeah but like it's all kind of hidden it's all sort of a mystery but like the actual at the root of it it's kind of crude crude tools <laughs> awesome Jocelyn what do you think about all this art going on in here <laughs> being new to Kansas City and all I'm sure that it was a very welcoming community yeah I mean it's it's great um Kate, yeah, I love, I know, the first time I saw her work, like, in the Heartland Force show, I was just very amazed, um, and yeah, it's great to see the variation, you know, um, of, like, more production and more, kind of, less functional work, um, uh, well, I was really interested, also a question for Kate, um, if you've ever taken that kind of two-dimensional way of working into something more three-dimensional, kind of building on that, uh, yeah, um, actually, I kind of started in reverse. Um, oh. I, when I was an undergrad at KCAI, um, I was making uh, glass crowns and headdresses. It actually, I was, when I saw your mask, it like definitely reminded me of that work. And, um, and so it started flat and then I would use um, plaster silica molds or, um, the the fiber felt um you know if you if you fire like the stuff that you put down to like line the kiln shelves uh, once it's fired it's very soft and malleable and so you can get like a very organic kind of um like it can be like kind of like peeling up wallpaper uh, but it's it's really hard to uh, ship figuring out how to like pack that work versus when it's flat so I've kind of just out of necessity taken a step back, but I do, I do love playing with it more three dimensionally. It's just that extra um, thing to figure out, you know, it's all problem solving, right? With, with, with any type of art, but like, I, th I think with glass, that element of like, it can break at any moment. There's just so much problem solving that has to constantly be happening, but. Do you have any questions for uh, Tyler about his projects? I've got a question. I've got a question oh, for Jesslyn. Right. Okay, I'm cool. Sure. Hey, Jesslyn. Uh, so that was a major shift to, to kind of move from video. And I know you still do some video work though, right? Is that correct? Or yeah. You, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, no, but it I was do. a major shift. Okay. Um, it was a major shift to like go from video to then hot sculpting. Um, and uh, yeah, just wondering if you see another shift coming or if like you're gonna, you know, take that and run with it or um, kind of where you're seeing your, uh, your momentum from here on out. Yeah, I mean, I think that video is kind of at, my, at the core of my studio practice. Like I wanna continue making performative video work because I don't see 
a lot of glass artists do that. And I think it's like glass is a very performative material and it's very interesting to work in that way. Um, and um, the hot sculpting is more of like a side project to me, something that like kind of for fun, because it's a very enjoyable process for me. Um, it's more like a stress relief kind of thing. Um, but right now I'm actually kind of, kind of steering towards kiln working. Um, I'm very interested in a lot of like kiln process because I personally like one of the things I find charming about glass is the materials, all the different ways you can work with it. Um, and I'm kind of just one of those people who are like very interested in a lot of things. <laughs> so um, right now I'm kind of trying to do some more kiln and stuff. Um, I actually do have a project in progress that will involve kiln working, so that's exciting. Exciting. Um, I really enjoyed how you were using glass and the performance stuff where it, you know, there was a vulnerability and the fragility was there, but also it was, um, you know, it's dangerous, you know. Uh, I felt like that sort of, um, the tension of like eating the glass or somebody breaking something near your eye. There was such a um, intensity to it that made it not about it being fragile, but it's almost was like violent or scary. It was very powerful. Yeah, I, I just thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna suggest you might check out uh, Michelle Chan. She's not a glass artist, but she's doing some interesting uh, work with acetates and plastic and doing some headpieces like that that are you might want to check out as a past resident. Um, we got a couple more minutes. It goes so fast. Uh, Tyler, maybe you want to talk about Monarch a little bit? Because um, uh, yeah. you know, we're talking about how people can come work with you. Uh, maybe I'd be kind of curious. There might be some artists who didn't know that that was something. That yeah, um, and we've actually had some uh, great artists come in. Um, and Andrew Castaneda, uh, who went through KCAI, and Pierce is like coming in and, and working at Monarch, and we're addicted to her coming in and working with us. Uh, and we actually have a lot of uh, stained glass artists come in and design sheet glass so we can make sheet glass for them for their projects that they're working on. Um, we've got two coming in October. Um, I really like when an artist comes in. It brings a, a whole new energy. So, um, yeah, uh, we're always open armed for artists. And, to come. and pierced glass. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. She's been making some great, great work. Some um, great. Yeah. Very cool. Um, What's uh What's next for y'all? Does anyone have shows coming up in the next few months? Or okay. do you want to drop? Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, I um I'm gonna be having a solo show in Chicago, um September 9th, um at Ken Saunders Gallery. So that's something very excited. I'm very excited about that. And then I'm actually participating in. Um, this show called uh, Through a Glass Darkly that's going to be at Delaware Contemporary. It's a really big glass show um, that also opens in September. So <laughs> there's a lot of things happening in the studio, but it's it's exciting. Yeah. You might need an assistant. How about you, I, Tyler? I, besides the uh, Lawrence one sounds like that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big... So. I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've, I've kind of shifted away from galleries and more into commissioned uh, installations. I really just enjoy the reward of doing a site-specific site kind of changing of environments um, and things. So just did an install at uh, Powell Gardens um, where we made some American lotus flowers and those are up all summer. And um, so you should go out to Powell Gardens, check them out. Um, and uh, then, yeah, the Lawrence Transit Facility, we're also going to be doing a fire uh, station in Columbia, Missouri, so doing the two college towns, um, and then a bank in, uh, in Columbia, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, installation stuff, not so many uh, gallery shows, though I do, I, I, I do like making uh, work that would, do, uh, that would do well in a, a gallery, I just, I get wrapped up in these kind of like installations, and I kind of lose the sight of making something that would be, uh, you know, on its own, but yeah. uh, 
I, I think you need to collaborate with these other two and make this yeah thing. I would love the that performance, <laughs> the performance inside of it and you're making let's make something thing. huge <laughs> and, what, and it won't be in a gallery yeah it'll be for the whole world to see yeah <laughs> uh, how about you uh, Jeselyn you got uh, anything I know you just were in the show um, and maybe you're, yeah. you're you're changing things and maybe you're not quite there right now it's it's yeah. head down in the studio definitely um just started on a couple of projects one that doesn't involve glass and one that does um so hopefully i'll be making new work the next few months and putting it out there um yeah awesome um well this goes so fast and like i said the idea of this is just one just to kind of check in on the artists see what they're doing in the city hopefully connect people of different stages in their careers because you can always learn something from the youngins and from the elders and um, just encourage you all to get out there and check out some of these studios uh, it's very exciting to have in kansas city part of it and i'm sure that if you're looking for some experts and advice one of these three you could find them on their websites tyler's is www.monarchglassstudio.com we'll see you there <laughs> kate clemens kateclemensart.com boom Jesselyn, what's your website? Or do you have one? Yeah. It's, it's jesselynmilawa-art.com. Wow, you all are official artists. You have websites. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> awesome. Well, you can see this goes fairly fast. I really appreciate the time and putting these together and just, um, you know, I know it's uh, it's hard to get down to 10. So uh, this is just that fast speed dating kind of thing. But um, thank you all. And we will see everyone next month. Like I said, every second Tuesday, we'll have another batch of artists for you to meet. Have a great night and keep up the great work. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.